it's currently like 2 a.m. And I just got done recording with this ridiculous setup we've got going here. A comparison between today's microphone and the SM7B. This is the first time I feel like I have felt like a microphone not only reaches the SM7B and excels at what the SM7B is great at, which is the noise rejection, the up close podcast sound, you know, aside from the RE20, which has a distinct different sound. Not only does it do everything the SM7B does, it does it better. It finally happened. My, my mind is blown right now. You know, it's really, really awkward reviewing a microphone when I have a competing microphone sitting right in front of me that I can't talk about yet, especially when it's from the same company. A few weeks ago, I declared this microphone right here, the Earthworks Icon Pro, to be my new favorite desktop microphone and that I would be switching to it primarily for my main desktop. This remains true. However, Earthworks also had already sent me another microphone that they were worried would beat it out. And oh boy, is it nice. The microphone sitting in front of me is the new Earthworks Ethos. This is a more kind of broadcast style microphone. They're both broadcast microphones, but you can see <laughs> there's there's definitely a difference in presentation because they're kind of designed to be used different. different. While the Icon Pro was kind of intentionally designed to be used away from your mouth and at an angle, which I prefer for this kind of setup and why I stated that it would be my ide ideal microphone for these kinds of setups as I want to move to having my microphone as minimally in my frame as possible. This one's more designed to be used close up, like a proper po podcasting broadcast microphone that you're used to using. But it competes with some of the best of the best in this category, including the OSM7B. Now, previously on my channel, I have never really stated a, or pinned a microphone up against the SM7B and been like, this is the SM7B killer, this is the new king, blah blah blah. Because I thought that was kind of a pointless endeavor overall, and I knew in my heart of hearts that in order to beat the SM7B, other than, you know, standard preferences, like I prefer the RE20's function and sound over the SM7B personally, but I know not everyone does, and it do the SM7B does reject background noise better in most cases. I knew in, in order to truly beat it, you would have to be just as or more expensive than the SM7B. Earthworks kind of confirmed my theory here. The Earthworks Ethos is a condenser broadcast microphone. We've reviewed a couple of these now, just like the Icon Pro. This has a huge advantage compared to the SM7B in that it is super easy to drive. You don't need a cloud lifter, you don't need an inline preamp, it takes 48 volts of phantom power, and it requires like 30 decibels of gain. So it's really easy to get sounding powerful and great without a super expensive preamp or anything like that. Whereas the SM7B, already being a $400 microphone, requires a higher end audio interface that has preamps that can do it, or a $100 to $200 cloud lifter fed head, that kind of thing, to get the boost in, in order to make it sound great. And in fact, the interface I'm using right now, which I have switched to as my main audio interface at my desk here, the PreSonus Revelator IL-24, despite having higher gain output on paper, I personally found that it wasn't enough to actually power the SM7B in a way that I found to sound super great. Whereas, perfect match here. Physically, we're looking at a fairly standard podcast mic form factor in that you got the little body with the XLR coming out of it, and then you have the windscreen, and then you get basically an interference kind of Faraday cage around the capsule here, and the capsule's kind of just, it's got a basic pop filter in place and exposed right here, and it comes with a big old windscreen, kind of resemblant of a lot of broadcast mics these days. Keep that on there. This mic, however, has no switches, so no bass roll off, anything like that. You'll have to do all of that in post. What it does come with is the Triad Orbit ball head that Earthworks includes on their microphones, which is an absolute incredible value. I talked about in my review of the Icon Pro. It helps you get the exact perfect positioning for your microphone, even in ways that a normal microphone arm wouldn't allow you just to get those final finishing touches, and I feel like every microphone needs this these days. Just as a quick note, uh, I had a lot of people asking what windscreen I used on the Icon Pro in previous videos and I didn't actually have one. They will be selling the windscreen that they include on the Ethos as a separate accessory that you can use with both Icon USB and Icon Pro, so that's pretty neat. This microphone has a 14mm condenser capsule and the frequency response is 20Hz to 30kHz with a SPL handling of 145 decibels, which is pretty nice. And the windscreen should help plosives, we're going to talk here, plosives, pretty po plosives, Pelosi, Pants, 
Pinata. It's hard to think of words that start with the letter P. Now, there is a little bit of a proximity effect on this microphone, and I think there's a little bit more compared to the Icon Pro, uh, but not necessarily in a bad way, because it's designed to still sound pretty great when you're up off of it, right as I am now. But when you get up on it, you do get a little bit more warmth and boom to it that I think brings it to be one of the most competitive microphones in terms of sound. Now, we'll have some comparisons in a moment, but the difference compared to the Icon Pro is that you don't really sound super different up close or further away, so you get the nice advantage of being further away. Now, they intend for this microphone to not sound super thin when you're further away, but honestly, I still prefer, even though this microphone on the whole gives me a warmer, kind of fuller voice compared to the Icon Pro, I still prefer how the Icon Pro sounds at a distance, especially once I add my own EQ in post. Speaking of EQing in post, we'll switch to, for the rest of the video, other than comparisons, me having my own EQ applied to this microphone. Once you get up on the microphone, however the sound is incredible now it's it's pretty solid no matter where you are but I find once you're up on it the sound is so stellar that I can finally explain or I can finally take the opportunity to explain a little bit of how I feel about the SM7B so I've talked about the SM7B I'm gonna unplug it here a wide gamut of times it's a wonderful microphone it's $400 it rejects a ton of background noise it uh, has been used in broadcasts as well as music production and the like for a very long time. And I have talked about before that while most use cases of it, streaming, podcast, Joe Rogan, whatever, IMO completely ruined the sound of the microphone by just flattening the dynamic range and EQing it poorly and just getting it super boomy and muddy. Out of the box, it can sound fairly natural sounding, but the warmth is a little too boomy. I have always felt it to be a little too boomy. That's why I hate the typical podcast sound you get out of it, because people get right up on a talk like this, and it just sounds really boomy. That, I think, has to do with the frequency response in it, the way it handles that lower 100 to 200 kilohertz range. It just doesn't handle it in a way, at least on most interfaces and recorders that I have tried. It just doesn't handle it super pre pleasantly. The, I, the ethos here, I keep wanting to call it the Icon Pro, the ethos does it right. It is a super subtle difference. We're really getting into the weeds here to talk about the differences between the Ethos and the SM7B in terms of raw up close sound, because I, I, I really believe that the Ethos sounds better, but I would not blame you depending on what audio hardware you're listening on for honestly, maybe not even telling a difference or maybe not being able to determ determine what you like better because there is a specific way that this microphone handles that lower frequency range that I, have emphasized in my voice that I think sounds richer and fuller compared to the SM7B. The presence of those frequencies are kind of the same, but they sound boomier and just less rich. These are super subjective audio terms that don't really mean anything, but it's the only way I can describe it. They sound less rich and like natural, like how I would actually sound in real life. The, the literal like flicking of my vocal cords. They just sound kind of boomy and just pressure on the ears. Whereas with the ethos, it actually starts to sound like you can hear the rumble of my voice and the, my vocal cords vibrating and all of that, which I don't get out of a lot of mics. And it is really nice. Three rings for the oven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the dark lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. The difference, however, and the advantage that the Ethos has is I can back up to talking like this and mostly sound the same. I'm not going to get quite as much of that punch, but for the most part, my sound quality won't sound the same. And if I start talking over here, I will sound the same. If I start talking over here, I'll mostly sound the same. The further you get away from the SM7B, the thinner and the absolute worse you sound. The SM7B is a microphone that you need to basically eat or you're not going to sound great. This is not the case with the Ethos. Again, I do believe the Icon Pro is better if you specifically plan on recording at a distance and leaving it there. I think this performs much better, but if you want a mixed use case or you plan on being a little flexible with it or you want to be like half and half, I think the Ethos comes out on top, but it's it, it's right there. Let's roll some comparisons so you can see what I'm talking about. This is an expensive microphone, so I'm only comparing against the top couple mics for this specific exercise, but you can reference all of my other microphone reviews for comparison samples. Three rings for the oven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the dark lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the oven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men 
doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. This is a talking while typing test. Talking while typing. Ticky tip 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 tap. Talking while clicking. These are box royale switches for the keyboard. Talking while typing on box royale switches. Talking while typing. Talk talk talk. Click 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 click. We're gonna do a talking while typing test. Talking while typing on box royale switches. Talking while clicking. Tippity tip tip tap tip tap tap tap. Talking while typing test, talking while typing on box royale switches, talking while typing and clicking, talking while typing and clicking, talking while typing. And we have a talking while typing test, talking while typing on box royale switches, talking while typing, talking while clicking, click, 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 tip, 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 tip. Talking while typing, talking while typing on box royale switches, talking while clipping, clicking and typing, talking while clicking, tippity tap, tip, tap, tap. And our white noise test. We're starting out in front of the microphone. Coming around behind the microphone, off to the left. Behind. We have our white noise test going in front of the microphone, up above the microphone, down below, back behind the microphone. We have our white noise test in front of the microphone, going around the microphone. And we have our white noise test right in front of the microphone, beside the microphone, on top, back behind, down below. And our white noise test in front of the microphone. I did want to note that for the SM7B recording so that preamps are not a concern or difference, I specifically recorded it with my sound devices mix Pre 3 Mark II here, which records in 32 bit float, which means gain staging is completely irrelevant. The preamp powers the microphone, and then gain becomes mostly irrelevant at that point. So that way I could keep things as loud and crispy as I need without clipping, but also have an even kind of playing field in terms of gain staging for both microphones. And I think that really works out here. Of course, you can emphasize the mic with uh, something like the Soyu Launcher instead of the uh, Cloud Lifter if you want some of that analog warmth or. 
obviously lots of EQing, but personally, I think if you're looking for an up-close microphone for, to use for podcasts or broadcasts or live streaming or even content creation, where you're fine with eating the mic, a lot of people, that's just their natural state. That's how they want to speak or that's what they're used to or whatever. If that is what you want, I don't think you can buy a better microphone for under a thousand dollars than the Earthworks Ethos, especially if you specifically want the background noise rejection. Because while it is a condenser microphone, it is a broadcast condenser microphone that comes with all of the extra kind of rejection of your background sounds, your keyboard, your ambient sound, your reflections off of your desk and things like that, that a lot of standard condenser microphones really, really struggle with. Even some microphones that may sound better, like naturally. This isn't a microphone necessarily for voiceover boots. It's for these kinds of broadcast environments. That being said, if you want your microphone specifically off camera or further away from you, like I have been trying to do, I think the Icon Pro beats it, at least for my preferences, but you can choose for yourself. Earthworks have done it again. They always make seller microphones, and this one is a fantastic new option for streamers if you're willing to pay the price. This microphone is $699, and I'm sorry, but in an era where people are trying to basically squash the idea of the SM7B being a great microphone because it's $400, $700 is a big ask from the market that I speak to typically. There's a lot of people out there, esports orgs, bigger professional broadcasters, people like that, that will not necessarily, you know, have that flinch to that price point so much, but a lot of independent streamers and Twitch streamers and content creators like that will look at that price point and be like, uh, yeah, and understandably so. I think a lot of people who were looking at some of the more expensive condenser microphones or even the shotgun ones like the MKH 416, which are stellar voiceover mics, but honestly terrible at the desk, they might look to this, save a couple hundred bucks and have a microphone that performs better for that specific scenario while still sounding just about just as good. But it's, it's very expensive. It's more than twice as much as most of the microphones that I tend to recommend as higher tier. Now this also competes with even more expensive microphones. And I think that's something that I'm not giving Earthworks fair credit here for, but that's because I haven't used those microphones. The most expensive microphone I've used is again, my MKH 416, which isn't even necessarily relevant in this specific context because it sucks for this use case. I haven't used the super, super 1500 plus dollar condenser microphones to really compare or have a context to tell you it's a better choice then because most of my intended audience aren't buying mics that expensive, or at least they don't tell me about it. I love this one. I am glad I'm finally getting this review recorded because right as I finally sat down to review it, my kid had gotten sick the week before and then got me sick. And literally the night I was like, all right, I'm probably gonna pick up this ick. I need to go ahead and record this mic review. And literally that night, by the time I got to the point of re wanting to record, I was so sick and I've had to put this off for a week. So I'm glad I'm hopefully getting it out for release here. There have been a few of you who've reached out on Twitter and are like, should I get the Icon Pro or the SM7B? And I'm like, wait till next week because it's a really good option. And if you're willing to pay for it, you will not be disappointed regardless of what you intend on doing with the microphone. And it is so rare that I can say that, but you have to pay for it. And I don't know if I can tell anyone to pay $700 for a microphone when realistically the Icon Pro as far as I can tell, gets you like 90% of the way there, if not more, and still beats the SM7B for a lot of use cases, personally. That's it for me. Product links will be in the description below as they activate. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm Epos Vox, the stream professor, and let me know if you plan on getting this microphone. Go check out the other videos on my the SM7B and the Icon Pro if you missed them, linked below.